Persona 4 being so important to me, it's no exaggeration when I say I had sky-high hopes for Persona 5. Persona 5's long and rewarding journey definitely managed to pass and even exceed my expectations with a deep JRPG story that stole my heart thanks to a masterful balance between deep gameplay mechanics and the rich narrative being the best the Persona series has seen so far. If you're like me and miss balancing school life, rich dungeon crawling and a great JRPG story, plus fulfilling relationships on an in-game day-to-day basis, Persona 5 has all of this in a stylish 100 hour plus experience that is a standout entry in the series and in the JRPG genre. Persona 5 begins in typical Persona fashion. Between strange dreams about velvet rooms and being granted special powers, you're a transfer student entering a new town, ready to start your life and not get into too much trouble, especially since you're on probation. This is until it comes to light that a bunch of important individuals in Tokyo are corrupt, and as part of the special powers you've been granted, you're required to partake in a rehabilitation that tasks you with removing their distorted desires by stealing them directly from their hearts. After discovering other worlds in the form of palaces on the way to school, finding out how to use them for your goal and meeting a talking cat, it's time to become an after-school phantom thief and change hearts by conquering dungeons with your friends. Yes, it's a pretty outlandish premise, but detailed storytelling makes it a gripping tale that kept my attention for the entire journey. The unique premise is brought to life by Persona 5's wonderful cast of characters that are all outcasts in their own way. Each character has their own perspective and personality, such as the quirky artist Yusuke or the kind but feisty student council president Mikoto. And thanks to each character's own hardships, their motivations are very easy to get behind. Even comical and potentially tropey characters such as Ryuji have shining moments that are depth to their archetype, and while I loved the characters in Persona 4, the depth of Persona 5's made me connect to the group instantly. It's great Persona 5's cast is so good, as a big part of Persona is spending time with your friends and raising your confidant relationship with them. The social mechanic from previous Persona games is updated to give much more benefit than just a little boost in Persona strength. Confidants also provide skills that help the protagonist in his journey inside and outside of dungeons. Skills so useful that they're essential to using your time in Persona 5 wisely. These skills introduce a layer of multitasking to Persona 5, as you can get your friends to do things for you, such as grow SP restoring items or make lockpicks for treasure chests, while you run around the buzzing city of Shibuya doing other things to aid your Phantom Thief journey. It's an appropriate step up for Persona 5's already engaging time management aspect, and heighten the experience I love of Persona trying to make the best of its large yet limited amount of in-game time. Persona 5 isn't just full of social mechanics though. There are more day-to-day -day activities than ever to partake in when you're not busy conquering dungeons in the journey to make the protagonist a better person by raising social stats such as his guts, knowledge, or charisma. In the quest to raise your social stats that affect what you can do in daily life, you have many choices such as going to Shibuya and going to cafes to raise your knowledge or charm, or eating big burgers that raise your guts. You can even see movies about love to raise your kindness, or go home play a challenging video game to raise your proficiency. The balance of dungeon crawling in everyday life is a big part of Persona 5, and with so many things to do and people to see, the choice of saving the world today or tomorrow is a bit more difficult, but all the more fun to think about. All of Persona 5's fun social mechanics come together when using their benefits while dungeon crawling to steal hearts and fix the world. Persona 5's dungeons are a little different to previous Persona games, with Persona 5's use of set story dungeon layouts as opposed to the randomized ones of the past, working well to make the overall experience more interesting and also make it better for storytelling. Instead of just making more complex dungeons, Persona 5 adds in platforming, puzzles, and even a few stealth elements to make things more complex. It succeeds, with combinations of these elements making no two dungeons feel the same. The addition of these elements make Persona 5's dungeons reflect its stylish nature, and make it one of the most interesting dungeon crawling experiences I've ever had. I found myself in awe on multiple occasions by some of the challenges I faced, whether it be putting together a picture puzzle of an important plot point, or switching between being mouse or human to get through an intricate area. Working them out felt interesting and rewarding, on top of destroying shadows in battle. 
Speaking of battles, Persona 5 doesn't stray too far from the battle system featured in Persona 4, but it does make it more polished and adds in things from old Persona games to make it the series best yet. A bunch of nice shortcuts have been added to help you choose between using your Persona or attacking directly really easily, along with the incredibly convenient assist button that automatically chooses the best attack to hit an enemy's weakness if you have it. The most interesting addition to battle is demon negotiation, which allows you to talk to demons to get items, money, or even make them join your own roster of personas. While it can be pretty hard to tell what will make each particular persona happy, it ends up being an amusing little trial and error game to break up turns in battle. Whether it be asking for more money or suggesting a knife game to a cute pixie to try and make her join your team, the demon negotiation is a touch that suits the phantom thief motif, adds what feels like a monster collecting mechanic, and is a cool throwback to past Persona games and its Shin Megami Tensei roots. Partnered with a polished version of its usual battle system, Persona 5 is the best of old and new. Adding to the running theme of Persona 5 improving on all important aspects of Persona, the Velvet Room has also been improved with little things that make fusing Personas easier. The Fuse by Persona option allows you to sort by Arcana or level and scroll down the list of Personas you want to create, as opposed to showing a bunch together and checking the results before committing. It sounds small, but it speeds up the process of Persona Fusion a lot and just feels much simpler, even though there are so many Persona possibilities. Also added are a bunch of new things you can make and do with Personas. They unlock slowly through Persona 5, so I don't want to say too much, but there are ways to get items and even network features in there that add more choice to what you can do with your Personas, and with so many to collect, it's cool to have the option to do more with them. While Persona 5 is full of big changes in its dungeons and small quality of life upgrades in other mechanics, it adds plenty of small details that make the experience that little bit cooler. I got so many kicks out of getting my protagonist to watch a movie and hearing the little pieces of dialogue, or putting button combinations in while I made him play video games, or choosing which type of person I wanted to talk to at one of his part-time jobs. It's these kind of small details partnered with the changes to some of my favorite features that reminded me why I love Persona. It connects so well with me on so many layers, and these little features made it all the more stronger. These details are heightened furthered by a fun jazz infused soundtrack and strong voice acting throughout. There is thought and love put into every aspect of Persona 5, and it really makes the experience shine. I only left Persona 5 with one small gripe, and it's that the transition from PS Vita to home console isn't a perfect one when you factor in save points. There were plenty of long dialogue moments that were hard for me to witness in full in one sitting, if I was playing just before work or sleeping, and I found myself putting my console in rest mode so I could resume from where I left off more often than I would have liked to. In saying this, it's also something I can see effort was put into making easier, with players being able to save anywhere on the streets of Tokyo most of the time, and a mostly good amount of safe rooms in dungeons to save at. The lack of save points in long cutscenes is something I don't know how they could fix, as littering cutscenes with save spots would probably be annoying, but it's a problem I never had with the Vita version of previous Persona games. However, between better graphics, decently fast load times, and gorgeous anime and in-game cutscenes, Persona 5 does sit pretty well on the PS4, and the PS3 version had pretty okay load times too, and in the end, the slick experience fits pretty damn well enough on a current gen console. Persona 5 may not have released on Valentine's Day as it planned to, but it definitely stole my heart with its deep JRPG gameplay and characters well worth spending 100 hours with. I really enjoyed running around Shibuya and choosing what I wanted to do, whether it be running through interesting dungeons or making meaningful relationships with complex characters. Persona 5 manages to improve on its already great JRPG battle system and its tried and true gameplay formula. What it adds to the experience in new mechanics only heightens it, with it being the most polished Persona game and JRPG of recent times. I'm already itching to go back and see where different dialogue choices will take me, and its addictive high school dungeon crawling lifestyle was well, well worth the wait, and it's a must for any JRPG fan looking for a long, fulfilling experience. 
you for watching my video. Comment below and let me know your thoughts on Persona 5 and what your favorite thing was about it. You can like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you want more JRPG content from me, and share it if you want to spread the love about my channel and Persona 5, because more people need to play it. Check out the blog at jrpgjungle.blogspot.com. I do everything I do here and also some extra stuff in written form. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at jrpgjungle. And until next time, I hope you enjoyed the review. Thank you. Bye.